promise you what. Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. Gotta get all those thoughts together. Gotta get them all. All right, my thoughts, they're here. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Mr. Red Play's Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, so in the interim time between the last episode uh, and this one, I discovered something. I was looking through these files and this one, no, this one, it says Tower Keys. So <clears throat> one thing that it says here is 240 clock time and then it says 221. And so I thought, and it says a three digit number combination somewhere. And I thought, where are their three-digit number combinations? Well, I thought of two places. One was in the words that everybody, the poem words, like three, two, one, uh, et cetera. But as far as I know, I, I started looking through these. As far as I could tell, none of these duplicate like two, two, one. It's always two, three, one or something like that. There's never two of the same number in here. Uh, but whilst I was looking around in here, I found I found this here. 915, which is not, I don't believe, any of the words that you ever get to choose in the game. So that caught my fancy as well. And what we have here is 130915. So that's two instances of a three-digit number combination associated with the time. So if we look here at 130, I try to think what else is there about numbers. And there's these, which... These numbers here, they always go three deep. So, my thought was, what if you do that? So if I go one, three, zero, there's a file here. That's interesting. Uh, now it also says 915, and it makes me think that uh, these, that the date here, the time, the date, it might be relevant to that. It says, please try again later. What if it means at 915? We have to try to open this. So what I could do is set my system clock to this time um, in the switch and make like make sure that it uh, looks like that because I'm not going to be able to record at any 9.15 at any point. So that'll kind of have to be it. Uh, and then I can't remember the other one already. 2.40, 2.21. So this is what I was doing was I would go in here and every time you go into one of these things, um, there is a file there. You know how we were looking through this and a lot of them are just blank? But every one that, or at least those two that line up like that, they have something in them. So I think that's it. I think that I think there's something there. Um, so at 2:40, we have to look back at that one. So that's really cool. Um, I'll have to do that. And there's these other things. This was key pair one. It says gear, and then key pair two boat spaceship. Like these, I don't know. I don't know what those mean. And then key pair four, huh? I initially thought maybe these were the words in the poem words, and you have to find out what the number combination of those are. But for one thing, I, I don't believe that uh, gear or spaceship or the other one are in here. I did. I was looking through it. Uh, and for another thing, that would just give you three digits. It wouldn't tell you a time. So, I don't know. This, this is very interesting. Save. Can't open the save file. Uh, but that's cool. So what I think I want to do is go through all the side stories and then we'll look at all the mysteries there are to look at. Because as far as I know, um, there's not going to be anything in the middle of all of this that we'll need. A poem? Oh, in the side story trust. Okay. I was thinking, did I unlock poems? How? When? So I guess the rest of these must also be uh, in the side stories. I love this so much. It's just so cool. I love it and it makes me happy and we're gonna play the side story part two trust. Another day passes in a flash and it's already time for the next club's meetings. Whoa, <laughs> I read the word settings. The word settings and the word meetings, they're the same word to me. Although Monica should have come up with a plan for today's club tasks, she hasn't been able to shake her guilt and anxiety after reading Sayori's poem. Uh-oh, I'm so stupid. How did I let myself be the center of attention? Uh, I do think I want to come up with a less annoying voice for Monica. I don't know that I don't know that I love this voice, but uh, we'll, we'll use it for now, uh, and I'll, I'll try to think of something. Let me know in the comments what I should do to Monica's voice. Uh, Sayori is going through all these kinds of feelings, and I'm letting her com comfort me instead of the other way up better. What kind of club president does that? This whole time, I didn't think to ask about her own feelings. 
So much for the stupid WandaVision. Sayori enters the club room with her usual smile, but upon seeing the downcast Monica, her smile quickly fades into an expression of concern. Monica, is everything okay? I'm really sorry. I'm such a terrible friend. Huh? What are you talking about? You're an amazing friend! Monica shakes her head. I made this all about myself. Even you said so yesterday. You told me that I try, I'm trying to make the club that I need the most, right? But my problems are so trivial compared to yours. Sayori responds quietly. What are you talking about? But as she says that, her face darkens. Through the silence, Sayori mutters her realization. I left my folder here. Monica stares blankly ahead, unable to come up with a response. I wasn't ready to share those. Now you're worrying about me. I don't want that. But why? We're friends, right? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Friends, friends look out for each other. I want to be here for you as much as you're here for me. Another long moment passes in silence. The air is incredibly heavy. This is different. It wasn't just about you yesterday. It was about the club. Besides, things were so happy yesterday. You don't need to do this all of a sudden. I don't want it. I don't want it. Oh, she's John goddamn Snow. I like happy. So, if you do this, then you're just being selfish. No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. This is awful. Monica pa massages her forehead, struggling through the frustration of a paradox. She doesn't handle paradoxes very well because she's a machine. It's understandable that Sayori isn't ready to share certain things, but as unfair as it is for Monica to pry, it's also painful for Monica to force herself to ignore the needs of her friend. Who's talking right now? Why are they such an omniscient, like, third party in all this? Like, it's unfair for Monica to be prying, but Sayori should really be opening up about her feelings or whatever. Like, who is saying all these things? I'm sorry I looked. I disrespected your privacy. No, I don't blame you for looking. You would have at least needed to check if it was mine. Yeah. Monica takes a deep breath. <gasps> okay. I don't like when it does this. Makes me nervous. I understand that you don't want me to worry, and I think I'll be able to put this aside so that we can move on. But can you promise me something? <sighs> promise you what? Promise you what? Monica pauses to collect her thoughts. Gotta get all those thoughts together. Gotta get them all. All right, my thoughts, they're here. This is the Literature Club. Stop doing this, game. It's a place where people can express themselves in the ways that life normally doesn't allow them to. That's the Wanda vision. In fact, it's our vision. Right the way into your heart, or whatever. So, I just want you to promise me that you'll remember that too. It doesn't have to be right now, but I want to be here for you when you need it. I want us to be ourselves like that. Sayori smiles gently. I'll promise if you promise. Unable to help it, Monica returns Sayori's smile. I better. Me too. As the conversation closes, the mood in the room is lifted. With that behind them, it's time to proceed with the club activities. By the way, we never did find out who it was that they went all talking about to in the other in the other room uh, last time, which was yesterday. Does that say Australia? I feel like it does. Uh, all right. So, want to teach me about poetry? Huh? But what about recruitment? It's fine. We have plenty of time for that. But right now, I feel like I want to do this. I mean. I do have to fulfill my end of the promise, you know. <laughs> There's no way I could say no to that. Just don't expect much. I do a lot of writing, but it's not like I'm a scholar or anything. That's fine. I think I just need, like, some motivation. I never know where to start when it comes to writing poems. Starting isn't so hard. I kind of just need to write down your feelings and see where it takes you. Or you do. I don't need to do that. I'm good at writing poems, unlike you. Yeah, but that wouldn't come out any good. It's not supposed to. You're gonna have to fight your perfectionist mind on this one. <laughs> Maybe Sayori's like a witch. You can start by writing your feelings and see what kinds of things it makes you think of. And then you can turn your feelings into a little story. <laughs> I don't like this. Hmm. You can get your feelings down first, and then make it sound pretty later. 
that's kind of what I do uh, whenever I do any kind of writing. I always just write like just garbage at first, just put something down, just start to finish. Here's what I want it to kind of be like in general. And then I go through it again and again, and I kind of like just refine it and make it good. I feel like that's easier because you have to come up with all this stuff right away. And you're like, I don't know what to write or do or say. But if you just throw something down and then you're like, all right, well, this could be better if we change it to this. Helps me out. Maybe it'll help you out. It's like, it's not like building a railroad where you go from one end to the other. It's more like a collage where you find all the things you want to put in and then you arrange them in a pretty way. At least that's how I do it. It's not like it's the only way, but it's a really good way to not get stuck right at the beginning. I understand. Yeah, I always get so caught up in how it sounds, I forget about what's actually important. Monica pulls out a pen and a paper and starts writing on. Stop being a, such a per- Stop being a perfectionist, you idiot. Ha ha ha, I'm just kidding. Monica scribbles out you idiot after she writes it down. No, keep it. You are an idiot. Wait, why? Are you calling me an idiot? Of course not, but the point is you're not supposed to police your feelings, right? As be as dramatic as you want. Ha ha ha, but I was just... Well, yeah, she unscratches it out. She sucks the ink from the scratch back up into her pen. Sayori screams, how'd you do that? Underneath the scribble, Monica rewrites, you idiot. She stares at the paper, that makes more sense. Her words stare back at her. It's kind of funny how I wrote down what I'm mad at myself for, and then I did the exact thing anyway. This is really gonna take some getting used to. I believe in you. Thanks. I do too. Me, I mean. But of course, you. <laughs> Monica continues the exercise, jotting down her thoughts. By the way, remember in the uh, main game how there's the the picture in the back changes to the uh, 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 Sayori one uh, later? I'm kind of looking out for stuff like that every now and then. I'm like looking up anything weird going on here, anything untoward, uncouth. It's surprisingly quite a struggle to write down without overthinking it. But after a while, with Sayori's guidance and encouragement, Monica's sheet of paper begins to look fairly lively, peppered with all of her random thoughts. Just sprinkle those peppers in, just like sprinkle them in. Phew. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Let's undo that. Monica looks up and down at her sheet. Gosh, I feel so tense looking at this. Oh, I hate it, but it's also kind of Liberating. Mm -hmm. I can tell how hard you're trying. It makes me happy. I think you'll be good at writing poems. Maybe. Ah uh, ha uh, ha. Uh, don't give me too much credit. I'd have to really try really hard at it. But I think it's something I'll enjoy doing with you. Zeori beams. I'll stop here, but we still have time. Let's try to work on a new flyer for the club. I won't be so picky about the language. Yay! Let's do it! Monica and Sayori proceed with their work. With each passing day, the two of them become more confident in the club. How, what, how much time is passing all of a sudden now here? And who is that Sayuri, Sayuri who was, uh, 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 no. It would be, damn it, Natsuki again. Um, Natsuri. Natsuri. Who I was talking to the other day. We handed him a flyer, and they were all just like, Not gonna show up? That's rude. Not simply from their recruitment planning, but from their vision as well. As their bond strengthens, so does the essence of the literature club. Finally, they begin to tr feel, truly feel it's only a matter of time before they find more members. Alright. Interesting. Very interesting. Another day pass. Well, wait, another day passes. It's already been like just a couple of days just then. Why not just have that be part of those days? How does a bunch of days pass? They feel a certain way and then one more day passes. What is this? Anyway, another day passes, I guess. As usual, Mo Mo Monica is the first to the club. That Monica is the first to the club room. With her is a printout of the revised Literature Club flyer, complete with all the new ideas Monica and Sayori, Sayori came up with. Wait, is wrote all the ideas down on the flyer? It's a lot of words. If only this was the flyer we gave to that one reading girl the other day. It is so much more attractive than the old one. But the new catchphrase is featured clearly in the center of the flyer. 
right the way into your heart. Surely common sense would say that one writes from the heart, not into the heart. But the message being delivered is the one that one can use writing to discover themselves. Hopefully, Monica and Soria had thought, that would be enough to garner some curiosity from students. Why do I feel so tense looking at this? Monica thinks back to the previous meeting when she performed the writing exercise. I feel like I'm much lower in frame than I used to be. Although, since I edit these and correct them in post, they won't be noticed. In which case, sorry. Was I always this bad at expressing myself? How am I supposed to be president if I can't even demonstrate what the club is supposed to be about? The literature club is truly beginning to take form. Yeah, it looks like it. But with that, the weight of Mon Monica's shoulders suddenly becomes heavier. Debate club was always about rigid structure, formulating airtight points and counterpoints, and delivering them with conviction. It was about the person on the outside. That's why Monica was so good at it. It existed entirely within her realm of comfort. It's suffocating. I need to break through this mental wall. I need to learn to express myself for real. Monica pulls out a sheet of paper and grabs her pen. She presses the tip of the pen firmly against the paper. But her hand doesn't move. Monica, no. Instead, a tiny blot of ink reflects around the tip of her pen. Hey, didn't she say something about this in the main game? She was like, if you just sit there and wait, you'll just get a blot. But if you force your hand to move, something happens. Monica lifts her pen and stares at the little blotch. For some reason, she feels compelled to run her finger across it. As she does so, the black ink smears across the paper, ruining Monica's canvas. Ugh. Out of spite for herself, Monica presses her pen down once again, letting the ink collect. She creates a second smear on the paper. Come on, Monica. Just move your hand. Monica writes. Oh. This is what I get for seeking perfection. A stain. Actually, that's kind of like art. Monica slides the paper away from her and puts her head down on the desk. Oh no, Monica. Monica, no. Don't be sad. The air conditioner seems louder today. I'm here. Hi. Why is there nothing? Why am I not seeing anything? Monica hears Sayori approach her desk, then stop for a second, probably reading the piece of paper. Then she sits down in the adjacent desk. Bad day? Mm Mm-hmm. Me too. Oh no. Aw. Aw. You too? Aw. The new flyer looks so good. We've been working, you've been working so hard on the club, but also something else, I think. I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's so hard to just be vulnerable. Mmm. Sayori takes the sheet of paper from Monica's desk. She writes something down, then stares at it for a while. Can I trust you? Of course. You can trust me with anything. Sayori gazes at Monica with sadness in her eyes. Understanding the signal, Monica takes the paper from Sayori's desk and reads it. What's it gonna be? Sometimes I want to die. Jesus. Okay, here we go. We're off to the races, I guess. Uh, All right, we'll deal with that in a second. Let's just go ahead and block that off. What I'm curious about is... Uh, are these the same smudges? How does that work? Because it's not like she they erased the thing that Monica had written. So, did she also make smudges? I don't think so. Oh, geez. So, oh, P- Peter. <laughs> this is really, really hard for me. Her voice shakes. This is really hard for me. Can't do it. So, if I can do it, then you can't too. Because... You're like a million times better than me. That's completely not true. Sayori takes a deep breath, trying to steady herself. This is heavy, Doc. It is. That's something about me that I've never told anyone before. Not even my best friend who shall remain nameless. Even now, my head is, like, screaming at me to stop. Wait, you don't... You don't have to force yourself. I mean, just because of the promise yesterday. I want to. It just... feels right. I mean, maybe it's the part of the reason I came to this club in the first place. Could be. This is the literature club. I trust you more than I'm scared. 
At those words, Monica stands up. Sayori must have taken days to work up the courage for this. Were Monica's own futile but genuine efforts actually the push that Sayori needed? Sayori's deliberate breathes can be so hard, can be heard over the air conditioner. As she prepares herself to continue, Monica waits in gentle silence. I have this problem where I get really upset when people worry too much about me. I can't control it. It's like, why waste your energy worrying about me when you can just be happy instead? Yeah, I guess, Sayori. So I never fe tell anyone about these kinds of thoughts that I have. It's so much easier to just smile and help everyone else be happy. But that's terrible. Who says terrible? Oh, that's what Monica wants to say, but she stops herself in fear of saying the wrong thing. It's just that if everyone knew about me, it, they wouldn't treat me the same anymore. Like, whenever I'm not smiling, everyone else would worry about me and ask what's wrong. I know that because it used to be like that. Sayori pauses, seeming to recall something in the past. I just want everyone to be happy. Are we getting backstory for Sayori? I feel like we know so little about, like, the actual lives and history of these people. Like, we know their, their, their issues, their problems. Like, like Natsuki's whole thing with her father and Yuri's, like, knives thing and Sayori's thing and <laughs> whatever the hell is going on with Monica. But, like, we never know about, like, anything about these people, you know what I mean? It's weird. That's the most important thing to me, and letting people look inside my head doesn't bring happiness to anyone. That's not true. Sayori pauses again, her solemn expression looking, making her look almost like an entirely different person. How did you find the courage to tell me this? You're not worried that I'll be one of those people too? I am worried. Part of me really hates myself for doing this, but another part of me, I think just felt like it would be different this time. Whatever we talked about what the club is supposed to mean, I kept feeling like it was right for me to do, especially after we've been trying so hard to express yourself too. It just made me feel like I could say it in confidence and our friendship doesn't have to change. <laughs> it's so silly. The club is only two people, but it already means this much to me. Ah, Monica feels a tightening sensation in her heart. A feeling of connection as Sayori emotiates radiation. What happened there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's early again. Um, I mean, it's not really that early, but I have been uh, sleeping. A feeling of connection as Sayori's emotions radiate between them. That's dangerous. Me too. I was so lost until you showed up. You're so brave, Sayori. You're so strong and brave. I don't even compare. Monica steps forward. But, if nothing else, I can at least offer you some hug energy. Uh-oh, if you'd like it. They're not gonna show it. Oh, they are showing it! That is a hunched back, Sayori. Is that... Is that normal? Can you hunch your back like that? My nose is very itchy. I'm trying not to itch it whilst on camera, but there's little I can do. Wordlessly and without a smile, Sayori rests her forehead on Monica's shoulders. <laughs> you're gonna stab her with your pointy nose. Everyone's nose is so pointy and you're just gonna, psh, ah, my shoulder. Throughout their contact, Monica can almost feel the torrent of thoughts swimming in Sayori's head. At this moment, enchanted by the air of the club, Monica realizes that all of the days that have passed this is the one where she really, really hopes that nobody new walks through the door. She speaks softly. You're like the sweetest girl I've ever met. You could say anything. I'll never judge you. I promise. Sayori's breath begins to quiver. She takes several deep breaths, trying as hard as she can to start speaking, to say the thing she never once dared to say out loud. Finally, she speaks in a choked voice. I'm so worthless. I'm worthless and everyone would be better off without me. She suppresses a sob as a tear falls down her cheek. I'm just an inconvenience to everyone. I'm not good at anything, and it feels like everyone has just had to put up with me, and I hate it. I hate it. Man, poor Sayori. I'm not worried about her, but poor Sayori. That sucks. The more Sayori speaks, the more she fails to control her voice, falling victim to the overwhelming sadness clushing at her throat and chest. I don't want to have these thoughts. I want them to go away. And now I'm making you put up with me, and I just want to die. As soon as Sayori loses her composure, Monica becomes determined to keep her own. She only wants to be what Sayori needs right now. <laughs> A hardened robot who does not care about her feelings? I feel like that might... Well, 
I, I don't know if it's fair to say that Hanukkah doesn't care about anyone. Also, look, there's a there's a tear. That's interesting. So she won't let any sadness show. Her voice comes through as soft as gentle. This isn't putting up with you. It's just being your friend. Monica offers a few words of comfort, but she knows, Sayori said it herself, that the thoughts Sayori experiences are ones that don't belong. And Monica can't magically make them go away. Oh, can't she? Monica, you can't control the thoughts and uh, experiences and emotions of the characters in this game? Yeah, right. Monica can't magically make them go away. Wait! Is it possible? Is it at all even remotely possible that Monica does not right now exper have the way to do it? Like, can she not do these things yet? Is she not able to control the game? But maybe she will be? That's interesting to think about. No, she can do it. She's lying. The most she can do is help Sayori battle them, like any good friend would do. You have so much value to me and your other friends, too. This club wouldn't have been the same without you. I really, really mean that. You uh, coming here was the best thing that could have happened. Even if we never got any other members, I would still be happy. That's what you brought here. You brought us a WandaVision, and you also brought happiness. And that's your favorite thing to do, right? Sayori doesn't respond, but Monica feels her gentle nod. Ah, you're scratching my shoulder with your pointy dagger nose. No more words are needed between them. Ah, uh, it's so sweet. I feel like, I don't know if this is good for Sayori. I don't know if this is what she actually needs. It feels right, but I don't know. The two share their embrace for a lo while longer, Monica letting Sayori take as much time as she needs. Once her breathing steadies and her sniffles fully cease, Sayori lifts her head and wipes her eyes. Yeah, I guess I needed that. Wow. Some days are harder than some days are harder than others. Well, I'm here whenever you need me. But any other time, I'll make sure that things are the way they usually are. If that's what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're the best. No, you are. The two exchange smiles. Here, here, have my smile. You know, I'm sort of sorry to bring this all up all of a sudden, but have you considered talking to a professional? Thank you, Monica! God damn, thank you! Jesus Christ, Sayori nods. It's scary, since it's already so hard to tell people. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, it will always be your choice, but if you're ever looking to find the courage for it, I can do my best to help you. Thanks! I think it helps knowing that you would. Aw, Sayori suddenly yawns and stretches. Wow, that made me tired and hungry. Ah ha ha ha. Well, I won't make you do any work today if you're not up for it. No, I want to. I mean, I can say it's definitely one thing that makes me happy. Monica smiles, but I want to get a snack first. All of a sudden, the sound of the door causes the two of them to turn their heads. Who is it? The door opens halfway, then stops. A face peeks inside. I'm going to say it's Yuri, that a face that seems familiar. No, God damn it. Don't do this. No, it's no, no. We'll never know. Wait, we didn't get any new mail. We did last time. By the way, we should do that. Um, We didn't read this. This was, I believe this was the Ive Laster one. No, it was this one. Ria Vort. Ria Vorte. Uh, side stories. Let's do it. Let's, let's read this one uh, just because we didn't do it last time. So this is Untitled Mail Group. Again, do not use. I wonder if this is just going to be like a consistent thing. I'm trying to find everything that there is to find in these game, this game. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you to everyone who worked so hard on the control simulation. I can't imagine how tedious it must have been to so delicately hide... Did I read this one? I don't think so. Delicately hide Monica's elevated permissions from her without disrupting her connections to the VM. What the hell are you saying to me right now? Just to clarify, all of the recordings labeled side, sto side stories are part of the control simulation, right? I'm noticing some details of the characters' lives here and there that differ a bit from those in VM1. Even trivial ones. Is it part of the butterfly effect from some of Monica's more fundamental changes? Or is it a result of her just messing around with the other characters in VM1 as her own experiment or for fun? So if I'm keeping track, we have like, what, five different universes in total? 
with three or four of them created and then destroyed by Mo by Monica, of course. It's funny because I keep wanting to speculate on which one is the real universe, but in reality, they all are as real as ours anyway. What? 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 Huh? Huh? My brain hurts. What are you even, what is, what is that, what does this mean? What does this possibly mean? How is this any possible? All right, hold on. Hold on. VM, I believe that could stand for virtual machine. I, we, at my work, we use these, uh, we have like a virtual machine uh, that we use to connect to and we have a few of them. So it could be VM1, VM2, but, 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 so, but what? And it's so weird that this comes before, I mean, I got this mail before I saw Side Story 2, because um, this says, uh, uh, this seems to apply that the first game, VM1, which, okay, let's write that down, actually. That That's probably handy to know. VM1 is, I believe, refers to the, the main game, I, I feel like. But could it be, is it possible that like when she restarts things in the game, in the main game, you know how when she deletes the characters and restarts, are those different universes or are those just all in the VM one? It's hard to say. And then these side stories, each of them are, are all of the recordings are part of the control simulation. Are those all separate from each other or are they all part of the control group? Are they all like the same thing? And when it says part of the control simulation, that leads me to believe, because when you talk about like studies and like scientific studies, a control group or a control thing is where you make no changes to something. You're like, here's the normal, natural thing that we're trying to study, how it works, and then we'll do a, con well, that's the control, then we'll do a modified version to see how that reacts differently. So are the side stories like the real unaltered thing? So, some details of the characters' lives here and there that differ from those in VM1, which I'm assuming is the main game. So, things are different in these side stories than in the main game? If so, what? So, Sayori still has the thing where she doesn't want anyone to worry about her. We know that's true. Um, we'll have to be on the lookout for that. That's very interesting. Okay. We also unlocked a new song. I don't know which one it is. Oh, we got this. That look, that just looks like it hurts for Sayori. Oh well. Oh, this is cool. By the way, I was looking through the posters, the pictures, and this one, uh, artwork drawn by Satchley to celebrate Monica's birthday in 2020. And it's like all in Zoom. That's interesting. This is obviously like a fan thing, but it, if it's in the game, it kind of implies like a little bit of like real world interaction, which I don't think we've ever seen anything like in the real world for these, other than. Monica talked about her Twitter handle. I guess that's true. Acquisition procedure. Delete Monica for the second time. This is cool. Oh, look. Review the file poem.txt for any anomalies. Oh, interesting. All right. So these acquisition procedures might actually be helpful. Also, these does not look like the characters at all. Oh, it's a first concept sketch. I was going to say, I don't know anyone who has, like, those side pigtails. That's weird to look at. Also, I don't know who has the bob haircut in the middle there. That's weird. Anyway, um, so that's it. I, I I think, you know what? We will. I want to do one of those uh, uh, files. I want to look at the timed files. So let's, what, what, what was it? Hold on. We have 2.40, clock time, 2.21. Two, so let's close the game. Let's set the time to, I don't know if it matters, uh, what, 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 what? You know what I mean? Let's do 2.39 just so we can get there. AM or PM, I don't think it matters. So let's do 2.30 PM. Let's do it. All right, it's 2.40. Yes! We're in! Project plan outline, high level overview, create human readable version of fabric benchmark results, suggesting we live in a simulated universe. <gasps> what? Emulate fabric benchmark results in virtualized environment, virtual machine, 
Build parameters for genetic iterations, custom elevated access levels for one or more entities. Or more? Iterate until simulation is stable for target time threshold. This is our small-scale simulated universe. Observe effects of elevated access slash knowledge of simulation. Collect record data. Pitch findings to upper management as a profitable venture. Note, do not go through Barry. Go straight to upper management. Get promoted. Job saved. All right. Possible team members. Row. Oh, cool. Okay. Row has most knowledge of knowledge slash access to commander quantum server. Ravi, second to row. Lib, fixing naming scheme conflict with lib folder. Oh, that's funny. I've, not sure why. Not sh Oh, sure, why not? Others? VM1, current project small scale stimulation, simulation. VM2, uh, future project medium scale simulation. What is happening with all this? What is this? VM1 details, literature. Production of text assets, easy data collection. Four entities, characters, small physical space, efficient for server and genetic iterations. Highly elevated access permission creates very stable connection window for data collection in exchange for less realistic simulated scenarios. What? Okay. Okay. So, Doki Doki Literature Club is a simulated environment universe created to study the effects of, I'm guessing, giving an entity unlimited power in a small-scale simulated universe to save people's jobs because they're going to get fired or something. And I can't get back in because now it's past the time. Oh, this has, by the way, this has a time different from the rest of it. This is 7 1 10 30. That's cool. I don't know why. What if you delete this? Unable to delete it. Elevated access permission to require our require to perform this action. I don't have enough permissions. Who am I signed in as, by the way? Who am I signed in as? 63% data collection. Well, I guess that's going to be it then because we've done it. It's done. There's no going back. Uh, we do have other stuff to look at, but I kind of want to go through all the side stories and then we'll explore all the files later. Uh, I think we'll probably, uh, what I'll do in the meantime uh, is go through these, um, all these here, because some of these we can't, we, you unlock them by doing stuff. Like this one we unlocked, uh, which by finished side story with trust one. So I bet if I have to do all the other side stories and I'll unlock more stuff. We'll deal with all that later. I will look through these because, like I was trying to say, uh, one of them, like this one, it specifically says, oh, cool. Select the word horror during the poem game. Uh, review fi the file poemwords.txt for any anomalies. I, If I didn't notice that 915 thing, this would have clued me into the fact that there are anomalies. So I will look through all of these and try to see what else it might be hinting at to do, and I'll do those. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. Uh, see you all in, I want to say two days for more of this. I don't know if I'll be, no, what day is today? I don't know. Soon. I'll try to record more of these soon and then get it out. Until then, I've been Mr. Red. And remember, stay spooky out there, everybody. Goodbye. Until then, thanks for watching. I always forget my sign off. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again. Stay spooky out there. Keep watching. Oh no. Just end it. Bye everyone. <laughs>